Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about growing your cool weather crops indoors. On the left I have my leafy greens. These are primarily plants that we're going to be growing for the leaves. And on the right I have more cool weather crops like cabbages and broccoli that you're not growing for the, the greens. However, the greens are edible. Both plants like to be planted into 40 to 45 degree soil, Fahrenheit. They enjoy the cool weather. They don't like when the heat comes, so you really want to get these outdoors as soon as you can here in Maryland Zone 7. And they can take a light frost. All the plants here can actually freeze and then defrost when the warmth comes and be perfectly fine. So that's why they're the cool weather crops. Not only do they like the cool weather uh, soil to be planted into and the cool temperatures, but they can take a light frost and some can even take a harder freeze. So we're going to go over the different plants that you see here. The end of the video is going to be about how I thin these out. I'm not going to do a planting of the seeds because I'm going to explain that and it's pretty straightforward. We're also going to go over the times when you should start them indoors. So let's start with the leafy greens. What I have growing today is first of all February 21st. All the greens here were planted on January 31st. So it's been about three weeks. We have endive, beets growing for the greens, kale, some more lettuces, kale on the right side there, spinach in the upper right corner, mustard greens right there, and then the rest of those are lettuces except for the plant here which is a different type of um, chard. Now the leafy greens you want to get out into the garden pretty quickly. You don't want them to overgrow inside. So we'll talk about the timing in a second. Now one tip I have for the cool weather crops is because they like the cold weather, when you're growing them indoors and it's 65 degrees, sometimes 70 degrees under your lights, when they break the surface, they're going to get very tall and lanky. See that growth right there from where my thumb is all the way to the right? All that growth is coming not because they didn't get light, Look, you can see it right in there, all the stem, but because it's so warm. So sometimes your cool weather crops can kind of get tall, lanky, and fall over, not because they're not getting enough light, but because it's too warm. So when they break the surface, you can take them outside and give them some cold weather, and that will keep them from getting, you know, to the point that they fall over. Now, these are all going to recover. They'll be perfectly fine, but sometimes people wonder, why are my cool weather crops so tall, so lanky, um, do they have enough light? And the answer is usually they have plenty of light. It's just too warm. Now when I seeded all these, I just put anywhere from two to three seeds in there. I overseeded some. These are going to be plugs for cut and come again lettuce. There's probably six or eight lettuces in here, lettuce seeds in there. In some places I just, you know, dropped in two or three seeds and then thinned them down to one. And I'll talk about that in the rest of the, in the second half of the video. These are going to germinate. Your cool weather crops, especially in the warm weather of your house, are going to germinate within five days really, really quickly. So be prepared. Get them outside for that day of chill or two to help kind of slow them down. So what I did with these markers is put the time on there of how long they should be indoors after they germinate. So that's a question I get a lot is, do you mean four to five weeks from when you put the seeds in there? or do you mean four or five weeks after they germinate? So for today's video, the number that's on here is after your seeds germinate. Even though they germinate quickly, maybe in your, in your house they're gonna germinate in 10 days. So you don't want to count the amount of time that they're sitting not germinating as part of the time indoors. So for your Swiss chards, you, after germination, you wanna get them out into the ground in four to five weeks. For your endives, after germination, about six weeks. Arugula, I highly recommend not starting indoors because it grows so fast and what will happen is it will kind of accelerate its growth and sometimes it goes to bolting pretty quickly because of the warm weather. I recommend direct seeding it. You'll get bigger plants by direct seeding it outdoors. It grows really fast and I think it's going to be uh, a much sweeter and, and tastier. Low germination at 75F. That is Fahrenheit. That's for the spinach. Spinach doesn't like warm temperatures to germinate. So if you're starting um, spinach and your lights are bringing it up to 70, 75 degrees, they may germinate a little bit slower. But everything else should pop really, really quickly. 
Lettuces you want to get outdoors three weeks after they germinate, spinach four or five weeks after they germinate, and kale in four or five weeks. And you know, they're pretty close. If you have them started in the smaller cells, you're going to want to kind of move them out sooner. You can already see at three weeks the root systems are coming through. If they're in bigger cells, like the kale and kohlrabi over here, you can leave them in a little bit longer. But the whole idea is to get them out into the weather that they love. They love the cold weather, they can take a frost, get them out there so they can establish and grow to their best. So I'm basically growing my leafy greens two ways. I've thinned them down, some plants like the endive, to a single plant, so I'll be spacing these about six or eight inches apart and growing a large head of endive. Beet greens, you can see a lot of plants coming up. A beet seed is actually a pod, so there's multiple beet seeds in there. And because I'm just growing it for greens, I'm not going to thin these down. Beets, I forgot to make a little marker on. You want them to spend about five weeks indoors after germination before they get outside. The kale, a single plant, they get huge. Lettuces, you can do a single plant like I've done here, and they will be spaced out uh, four to six inches, depending on what variety it is, sometimes larger. If, if the span of the head of the loose leaf lettuce gets 12 inches, then you want to give the plants, you know, a good 12 inches so, they, so that they can grow to full size and keep some space in between each of the plantings. Sometimes I'd put in a single plant when I'm growing them that way, or I might just leave two in there as an experiment. Where I have multiple seeds in there, these are going to be cut and come again. I plant these really three to four inches closely together, and I cut them before they're fully mature. Maybe when they're this high, leave the roots in the ground, and more leaves will come back. What's interesting, too, is, that, again, these will germinate really like in five to seven days really fast, but here's a kale plant they just popped a couple days ago after I've already went through and thinned them. Single kale plant. Spinach, I keep one or two in there. These are mustard greens. You can get these outside in about four weeks after germination. And I think you get the idea, is that you can set these up as cut and come again lettuce plugs, really overseed them, or you can thin them down to a single plant or two and space them out anywhere from six to eight to 12 inches, depending on the size that the plant gets when it's fully mature. To really plant them, they're all planted the same way. I drop them in, get the seeds down about a quarter of an inch, and they're good to go. All right, so highlight. I felt compel compelled to uh, quickly do a planting, the seed portion of the video. Swiss chard and beet seeds. These are uh, chard. They look like beet seeds. They're very similar. I put in two, press them down about a quarter of an inch, a little bit further and they're good to go. Now beets are seed pods. When you're growing them for the greens, I just leave all the plants there because I'm cutting the leaves. If I was growing it for a beet, I would thin it down to one plant. Swiss chard is also a pod. I just leave a couple of plants in there. Your lettuces, again, if you're going to plant, uh, if you're just going to plant one plant to grow to full size, I drop in two to three seeds and then you can press them in a quarter of an inch or just mix them in, get them under there. And then I would thin it to one plant for the lettuces or whatever plant I'm growing. If I'm going to grow them for cut and come again greens, I put in six or eight seeds and I just mix them in just like that. And then press them in and they will be my cut and come again lettuces. Your broccoli, your cabbages, kohlrabi, cauliflower, all the seeds look pretty much the same. And I just take three, drop them in right into the middle, press them in a quarter of an inch, and they're good to go. And you thin those down to one plant when the plants are about that tall. We're also gonna talk about acclimation because just because you have your lettuce growing indoors for three weeks, you also have to transition them outside. So I'll talk about how you do that and how it, what it means with respect to the number of weeks that is on there. So kohlrabi after it germinates four to five weeks indoors, cabbage after it germinates four to five weeks, cauliflower, broccoli, six to seven weeks after it germinates. Again, I'm growing these in these larger cells which I sell at my seed shop and I plant all of these with 
about three seeds into each cell and then I thin them out. And he's already been thinned. I'll show you that video. And you can see that they're doing really well. These actually got put outside. These were uh, started on 2-1. And again, today is the 21st of February. So this is about three weeks worth of growth. But you can see how well they're doing. Here's one that popped I missed. Let's thin that out. And you want to take them, when they're about this size, thin them down to a single plant. You don't want to be growing two cabbage next to each other. They get huge. Same with broccoli, cabbage, kohlrabi. Now when they get to this size, you're going to want to fertilize them with a water-soluble fertilizer, organic, anything of your choice, but really dilute it down and get it to close to a 1, 1, 1 NP and K. This video is part of my seed starting series for 2020. I'll link in to the video description, the playlist, and it'll talk about how you set up the uh, starting mix, uh, what I mean by a dilute, you know, water-soluble fertilizer and all of that. And generally speaking, you know, you're going to use the water-soluble fertilizer every 10 to 14 days. Just take a look at the plants. If they're looking a little bit yellow, maybe give them a little more uh, fertilizer. If they're looking good, you know, let them be and just give them a watering. You don't need to overdo it with fertilizer. These were just watered and fed, and that was their first feeding um, yesterday, actually. So these are some of my favorite cool weather crops. These are all plants I sell at my seed shop. This is also how I do my test germination. This is kohlrabi. Delicious leaves, and if you've not grown them before, they get this apple-sized bulb right above the surface, and they're really, really delicious. They're part of the cabbage family. Um, it has a cabbage taste, but there's a nice sweetness to it. This is broccoli back here. More kohlrabi. And I got some cabbages right in there. Now, there are plenty of plants here to get started indoors, get out into my garden, and kind of get things faster to the table. I'll also be putting out things out by seed. One thing you want to keep in mind is that because these plants are growing indoors, they're not used to the UV rays. So after they germinate, let's just go with lettuce. They germinate. We want to get them outdoors in about three weeks. After two weeks go by, and they're really close to that, you can start transitioning these slowly outdoors. Give them 15, 20 minutes of sun each day over a seven-day period. You'll get to that three-week period, and they're going to toughen up to the cold weather, to the wind, and to the UV rays, and then you're ready to get them outside. Subscribe to my channel because I'm also going to be doing a video on using a cloche or a glass vase to really get these outside quickly, not only as transplants, but also I'm going to direct sow a bunch of seed out there and put them under glass, and I'll show you how you can do that really easily too, in case you don't want to seed start these plants indoors. Okay, let's get to the thinning. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't want to watch the second half, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. But for those of you that are interested in seeing how I thin these down and what they look like after they sprouted and grew for about 10 days, here's that portion. So it's been exactly 15 days since I seed started these cool weather crops. Today is the 16th of February. These went in on February 1st. And I have cabbage, broccoli, kohlrabi, and that's it in here. This, you would do the same for your Brussels sprouts and your cauliflower. So it's thinning time. So I do start two or three seeds in here, like I've been talking about. And I've thinned these out already over here. They're in the bigger cells so that I don't have to transplant these up. You want a nice root system that can expand while you're waiting for that uh, four to six week period after germination to get them outside into the garden. So I just go right down the middle. I look for a plant that's not too tall or lanky. That one looks pretty good. So I gently pull this out. Now when you pull them out like this, you could disturb the roots of the other plant. Typically it's not an issue. But if you're worried, you could just cut these off at the surface. That's a nice larger one in there. So we'll remove these two. And I actually do, after this video, just eat the tops of these. Look for the plant that looks the best. You can see the ones on the outer edge that are sometimes away from the light. They're a little more lanky. That's normal. Just pick the one you want. Let's thin these out real quick. I mean, nothing fancy here. You're just reducing it to one plant. I like this one right there. Let's go over and finish up the cabbages. There's no really point in trying to divide these out. It's 
best to thin them. That one's nice and stocky. So is that one. And I over, uh, <laughs> I over thin them. I pulled everything out of that middle one. And this is all I do at about that two week period after germination. These are going to be ready now to be fed a light, well not light, but very, very diluted water soluble fertilizer. And this is the other flat of my cool weather crops. There's endive, different lettuces, beets, kales, spinach in there. And depending on what I want to do with the leafy greens, sometimes I overseed them and I will plant them in clumps. Sometimes I thin them out to a single plant. So this is Batavian endive. And when they get to this size, two weeks of growth, you're going to thin them down to one plant. You could also divide the leafier greens much easier. I think I'll leave two in there just for fun. These are beets. When you plant a single seed of beets, it's actually a seed pod. So there are a lot of beets in here. I'm growing these for the leaves. If I was going to grow them for a single beet, I would thin them down. Here's red Russian kale. I want a single plant in there. And again, these are a little bit lanky, but they'll be fine. They'll recover because these didn't get to go outside. I forgot. And you can see the long stem right in there. They hit the warm weather of your home and they stretch out. And we're just going to take these down to a single plant. This is Super Romaine Red, Black Seeded Simpson. These are going to be clusters. These will be planted as a cluster of uh, plants and I will cut them when the leaves get to about this tall and I will just have cut and come again lettuce. The ruby red Swiss chard, you can actually leave two or three in there. And it looks like, well, there's a stray lettuce. The Swiss chard, they get really lanky too. We'll thin that down to two. These are collard greens. We're going to thin them down to one plant. They get massive. And you really just kind of work your way through. I got dwarf kale. would we'll do the same thing, single plant. These are mustard greens. We'll thin them down to a single plant. The spinach, I actually like to keep two or three plants in there. So we'll take this one down to three. This is more endive. I'm going to leave two or three plants in there. Let's thin, you know what, let's thin this side down to one and the other side to two. And I like to do experiments. See what happens if you grow root systems when you have more than three seeds in there really get tangled. So I'd like to do experiments. Let's see what happens if you grow two in the same space versus one plant. If you get a better yield with two plants versus the one plant. And you can see you don't have to be overly gentle with them. They're going to do fine. And then I would thin that down to one. So I'm going to keep two on this side, one on this side. And you can just decide what you want to do. More lettuces. This is a ruby red lettuce, which I highly recommend. There is one in there. Two. I'm going to thin these down to one plant because they'll get to nice full heads. And that's all you really do. At about the 14th day of growth, you start making decisions on what you'd like to do, how you'd like to thin out your plants. And then you're going to get another two or three weeks of growing in here, and it'll be to the size you want when you get them out into your garden.